kids, welcome back to another episode of the Good Days Podcast. Welcome back to those of you who have been here from day one. Thank you for being here. For those of you who are new to my podcast, welcome. Yes, I've had a long hiatus. I know. I know. I know. But you know, when life catches up to you, sometimes you have to catch up to life. And that's just what it is. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. But today, I'm going to get into having a real depth conversation with you guys. And I didn't plan anything out. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to turn on this mic and I'm just going to go with flow. I'm just going to feel the energy right now. And with everything that's going on in the world between the scandals, the everyday shootings, it's come to a point where I need to get back in tune with myself and to give you guys the energy that you need. And also to really talk about the choices that we make and why the choices that we make define who we are today. So let's jump right into it. So yeah, like I said, I was on a long hiatus and I was just in my bubble. You remember when I told you guys about therapy and how I felt about therapy yes your girl did it yes she did so yeah let me just get into talking about that for a minute so therapy for me was rather interesting because I'm not a person that is going to force anyone to go to therapy if they do not need it and I felt like at that moment I felt like it was needed for me like I felt like there was There was some reason that I needed to talk to someone professional because I felt like even though sitting with myself and gathering my thoughts and meditating and talking to God was what I needed to do, I felt like it wasn't enough. And sometimes that should be enough, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes you just need that extra layer of protection of being able to be vulnerable with someone. And that's just what it was. It was me being vulnerable, me opening up, me speaking my mind, how I felt, and not feeling like I was burdening anyone. I felt like it was more of a conversation than anything else. And that is what I was looking for. Someone that I can converse with. So yes, so I went into therapy. I did the whole therapy. I have to say I've only did therapy for like two months. I'm going to be honest with you. I felt like it was getting too overwhelming for me. So let me just break it down. So when I got into the therapy, I started with, um, I, I, I even forgot the name of the company that I went with, but <laughs> that that's how blank minded I was even just going into it. I'm going to really have to look into that because I really don't remember uh, what I used to, and I, my insurance was paying for this shit. So I was just like, uh, okay whatever i'm just gonna just get into it and go from there i can't even remember the name right now but whatever so i went into it and i told them what i was looking for i was looking for a black woman and this is someone that i wanted to relate to now i felt like i needed a black therapist that's just me that's just my preference I felt like it was more of a connection and more of a relatability in terms of what I was looking for. So got into it, met this very amazing woman. She was very, very, very good. There's nothing wrong with her. It was just more me (laughs) than her. So we got into it and she got to unravel some things for me and how I felt about certain things and We talked about work, we talked about relationships, we talked about, you know, my family and stuff like that. And I felt like every time we was touching uh, a point of what it has to deal with family, I felt like I was being very restrictive and very reserved. I felt like I was pushing back having that conversation. And this is going to correlate to a book that I'm also reading right now that has, it just kind of mind blowing to me how these two things are connected. But anyway, as, as she was just kept tapping into that shit, I was just like, yo, this is not a conversation I want to have. And and then there's another thing. 
it wasn't like I was having these therapy sessions in like an actual office. They were more like Zoom calls. So I felt like they were not really personal. I felt like they were more just a uh, over the phone type of shit. And I felt like if I'm going to go into therapy, I want to be able to go into an office and actually have a conversation with someone where I feel like I'm more safer. I felt like the whole Zoom thing for me wasn't my thing. And I felt that's the part of the reason why I just decided that, yeah, I'm not going to go through this anymore. I'm just going to cancel this shit altogether. Because this wasn't going to work for me. Oh, yes. I remembered the company that I use. I use Octave. So Octave does correlate with your insurance if you do have insurance you can use it with insurance i am not sure how much the cost is if you do not have insurance but if you have insurance you're good you're covered for the whole year blah 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 whatever but yeah i i just felt like it wasn't really personal for me at least i didn't like the whole zoom aspect and i understand you know with the whole covid thing that we couldn't have uh, in office type of thing, but it was just something that was just not for me. <laughs> but she was very nice. She was very, very nice and very helpful, giving me tips and tricks and also giving me some things that I should think about and focus on and and it helped for the for the time being that I, I've used to that company. So again the company is called Octave. You could definitely look into it if you guys are into therapy and want to get into therapy they will help you find a therapist that is, fits best for you i think they nailed it on that part but i just wasn't in the space to really go through more of the therapy than i thought i was i, I just felt like i wasn't ready and she even asked me she's like are you sure you think you, you really need therapy when they start asking you shit like this it's because you are so in tune with yourself and you're well aware of who you are that when you hear somebody else tells you who you can be and who you are, it kind, you gotta, gotta, can you kind of get defensive on certain topics? Depending on what the topic is. it could If it has to do with your family, it has to do with relationships, it has to do with communication with people, whatever it is, you're going to be defensive. And I felt like I was more defensive than anything else. I had to ask myself, what am I doing here? How did I get here? How the hell did I get here? But I'm glad I'm here because it helped me to understand that I'm able to ask for help. And that's another big thing too. I've always been that one person. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of listeners that feel the same way that don't ask for help. You always feel like if I'm going to get something done, I'm going to do it myself. I'm better off doing it myself because if I ask somebody for help, they're going to fuck it up or they're going to do something that's going to irritate me. And then I'm going to have to explain it two and three times of why they did it wrong and X, Y, Z. So I might as well do it myself. But I'm learning. It's not about perfection. And I think that's what it was. It's always trying to have perfection and doing things the right way. When in reality, everything cannot go the way as planned. You just have to take it as it is. And you might learn something about yourself in a process you know, of learning how to understand other people and why they do the things that they do. Instead of just reflecting on just yourself or why you want things to be the way they are. It's like taking off your rose colored glasses for a second and actually just being open to the mistakes and being open to the things that are not going to be perfect. So that also entices with it as well of me really seeking help and asking for help now that I'm able to do that. So like I said, I was catching up with life, man. So this is this is all all the things that were translating for me throughout the duration of the time that I've been on hiatus and I'm glad that I'm in a point where I can just freely say that I'm okay with not being okay. I'm human, as we all are, and we're all intergalactic spiritual beings just trying to escape the matrix, just trying to figure shit out on a daily basis. And some of us might have the key, some of us might have the, the door, you know? It's, it's one or two of the others that we might need each other for. 
you know so it's it's a learning process and it's always going to be a learning process throughout our lives our journey this is not the end this is just the beginning and i felt like even though that the therapy session didn't last as long as it did i i i do apologize i'm glad that i was able to to do it you know and I, I I I don't have no regrets. Now, even though I didn't stick through it, I made it my duty to just try it. And there's nothing wrong with trying things and and getting shit done, completing shit finally. But um, I have to say that I, I made a choice, and this is the primary thing that I'm I'm going back to is the choices that we make. You know, giving up and sticking through it and making the, the right decisions. Whatever decisions we decide to make, we're making it decisions for our better, for us to become better. And that's the part of us pressing start on life. You know, listening to our intuition, our gut feeling. If something is not right, you're going to say, mm, I'm not going to do that today. And that's the part of it. And that's what we're going to start doing. Pressing start on living. So I just want to talk about how I plan to create a new, just some new ideas, some just new, just new, new, new in the few months of the beginning of the year. First thing, I I didn't even say this. Happy New Year. Even though (laughs) we're now 31 days into the year, you know. And we're going into February. I just wanted to say that as well. But yeah, I, as I've got into the new year, I just realized that there's so much that can be done within the year. And there's so much that we want to pack in the year that we, we possibly can't. And that's okay. But this year, I, I've decided that I'm going to create some, some new, new, new things whether it's creating boundaries, whether it's a new look, just something that I'm not accustomed to. I'm just trying to get out of the box. That's just what it is. I am honestly trying to get out of the box, doing new things, creating new things, enjoying new things. It's all new to me. That's just what it is. And no, I'm not giving you this this new year, new me bullshit. No, I'm not gonna give you that. I'm going to give you the real, real and tell you sometimes the past can tell you a lot about yourself and sometimes the past can reveal a lot about things that you've been doing within yourself. So if you can make the change again, back to decisions and choices, if you can make the change to be someone better tomorrow by doing what you need to do today, then I see you reaching higher heights than anything else. But when I say new, I do want to (laughs) start, I have to laugh before I say this, but I do want to start a new dating concept this year. So I was reading up on um, something on TikTok. What was it, TikTok? Yes, it was TikTok, where they were saying that dating has become transactional and i'm starting to believe that is the case well it's i've been on this app for a month now so it's called black and i decided to go on this app because of a friend of mine my friend was like yeah girl it's time to get out it's time to start dating it's time to forget the past it's it's, we're going into a new year let's get it together let's get out let's go out let's do what we got to do let's make our money i'm like oh Okay, I hear you. I'm with that. No problem. Cool. So, yes, I started to go on this app, met a couple people, went on a couple dates. I just want to say, I'm cool for getting to know people, but intentional dating is what I'm all for. Now, when I say intentional dating, I'm talking about what's your purpose? What is your goal? 
are you just dating to have fun are you dating to possibly get into a relationship marriage kids whatever it is i feel like now it should just be about dating with intentions this transactional bullshit that everybody's been throwing out no i'm not with it Mm -mm. no Uh uh-uh no because at the end of the day your source of income should not infect with anyone's source of income that you don't even know yet let me repeat that your income does not does not value someone else's income that you don't even know yet that man could have money but be, can be a narcissist could be crazy could be a whole murderer and you want to be with a guy that has money but you don't know him so yeah no um i i, I don't i no Mm-mm. it's a no for me so is dating up doing this whole dating thing i say you know i'm with it i'm down you know whatever whatever god has for me i'm with it i'm open to it i'm open to the possibilities i'm open to or anything new even new friendships you know i'm i'm down for it i'm thinking about leaving the past behind and finding my new tribe wherever it is it could be in texas it could be in atlanta it could be in florida wherever God leads me and desires and all of that, I'm with it. I'm all for the new. I'm all for the new. So yes, that's my goal for the year is and dealing with my expectations versus reality because I'm not expecting anything, but I am enjoying everything. And that's a newfound philosophy that I'm going with right now. I'm going to say this again so you guys can hear it. For the people in the back who didn't catch that, I'm not expecting anything but i'm enjoying everything okay yes i am stuffing my face with new beginnings however this year turns out i am stuffing my face with happiness because i have to say i have to say last year taught me a lot and it put me into a different perspective when it comes to dating, communicating, asking for help, making the choices, making the right decisions. It put me into a space where I can say, I'm enough. I'm more than enough. And if no one can see that by now, then you gotta go. You have to exit stage left. And you know what song that I had to really sit and listen to for a second? was heated by Beyonce like I, I would always play the song and would sing the, the sing the words but actually listening to that song I was like oh girl no way you talking about my situation right now I could be as petty as you are but you got me heated but I need to fan myself off because I know who I am I know my worth I know who I'm destined to be. And I don't have to deal with you playing the villain and the victim at the same damn time type of energy anymore. I'm gonna show you who I am. I'm gonna embrace that. And I felt like that Renaissance album <laughs> needs to be heard one more time. I'm, I'm saying it needs to be heard one more time. And actually listening to the words, they always say, songs don't value anything until you it means something in your life so when it resonates in your life that's when the words become meaningful and it's true in that that song baby hmm, the way how i'm set up right now (laughs) i'm not even trying to look for revenge i promise you i'm not even trying to look for revenge with anyone I'm going into the new year with the new possibilities, with the new opportunities, with the new blessings, abundance. Everything is successful for this one. And also for everyone that's listening. That is what I'm going into the new year with. So, plans and travels are included. Passport is required. I'm just saying. If we're going to talk about transactional dating, (laughs) passports is required. That's it. That's the only thing transactional for me. Passports is required because I tend to travel more, finding more in the beauty of the world. And I did say press start on life, right? So I'm gonna live it up. 
I'm going to live it up. (laughs) Before we continue on today's episode, I just have a sponsor today. Sponsorship on a brand. Yes, today's sponsor goes out to yours truly. I am proud to present my brand, prettyminxbeauty.com, a natural, affordable beauty brand. Definitely check it out. You will have 20% off of your first order if you sign up today. Yes, I will leave all the links in the description box. And sunandmoondecor.com, home decor made for you. So I just wanted to add that in there. Yes, your girl is sponsoring herself. You dig? (laughs) So now that we're talking about, you know, home decor and getting our natural beauty and, and all that good stuff... It's time for some early, 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 early spring cleaning. Yes, 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 Lord. I have been doing a lot of cleaning, throwing away some stuff. I feel like I'm in this space where I just want to get rid of everything just to make space for something new. I'm in the space of a, I need better. For real, am I the only one? Am I the only one? That's in this energy where I'm all about new. But it's not about new me, new you, da, 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 da. No, it's about getting rid of things that no longer fills the void that you once had. It's about putting in energy where it's giving you something to look forward to. It's about being happy. Well, actually, someone asked me this question. This person asked me this question. They asked me, what do, you, what do you define as happiness? And I told him straight up, I was like, I'm in the pursuit of it. I haven't found it yet. And his response was so spot on to a lot of us that are looking for it. And he said, you know what my, my happiness is? Financial freedom. And I said, you know what? I didn't think about that. But you know, that is what I want. His answer was financial freedom to do what I want, when I want, with who I want. And that is that right, that energy he gave me, I was just like, baby. (laughs) Yes. That is what I want. And I said, yes, in creating generational wealth. And that is, and I'm, and I'm still in the pursuit of that. I'm still in the pursuit of financial freedom, generational wealth, creating wealth, being in the aspect of doing things self-sufficient and not having to rely on a nine to five, not having to rely on a two weeks vacation out of 365 days of the year. Don't get me started. (laughs) Don't get me started. But yeah, it's just about having your own sense of control of what you can control with your time and i was also watching another video on tiktok with ocho cinco and he said time is free time is free you are free to do whatever it is that you want with your time if you allow yourself to see it as time is free he said i don't have to buy a $50,000 watch. He asked the guy who was interviewing him, he said, what time is it? The guy told him what time. He said, look at that, time is free. Why do I have to buy something that I can automatically retrieve freely? And it makes sense. If somebody else has something that I might need, it doesn't make sense me buying something that is already there for me to, to use. And especially if I can get that shit for free. Think about that. But, um, like I said, (laughs) it's all about new. Now, here is the part that we're all going to have to get into. It's the olive branch. I don't have an olive branch to give nobody this year. And that's facts. Even in the midst of cleaning and getting rid of stuff, I'm also not here for the olive branch. They'll come back with the bullshit about, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I apologize, you know, I shouldn't have said this, I shouldn't have done this. I can burn bridges too. 
okay and i think this is a early early new year resolution for me i never wait till new year's to make changes i've always been a person that if i can do something within the year before the new year i'm gonna do it and changes can happen every month in the year for me so yeah fuck your white horse and your carriage I don't need your olive branch. I don't need you coming back with some some friendship bracelets and telling me that, you know, we need to make amends. We no, we don't need to do shit. No, we we don't we don't we don't need to do nothing because right now I'm dodging bullets and letting go strays. I am learning to dodge bullets and not entertaining these strays. Cause honey, this year, this year. This year, I refuse. And when having to feel love is love, when it's not, I just need God to send me Mario. Thanks. I just I just need him to just reach out to his depths of his bowl and just give me Mario. <laughs> the singer, yes, Mario. Because at this point, he 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 gets me. <laughs> he gets me. His music speaks to me in so many ways is that these men out here ain't shit at this point. Ain't shit. But I digress. I digress. I just want to get into um, going back into talking about the book that I was um, discussing that had to relate to in my therapy sessions and why I decided to go into it. And I'm currently still reading the book Queenie. Yes, Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still reading this book. Queenie is so good. I I don't want to do any spoilers right now because if you haven't read the book, I think you guys need to read this book. But this book is really, really good. It's actually my favorite. So far, out of the list of books that I've had, I have to say that this is one of my favorite. It's by Candace Cardi Williams if you guys decide to pick it up it's really good it's a really good book I am up to chapter 27 <clears throat> hopefully by this week I'll finish it but yeah um what else what else should we talk about shows now as you guys know my favorite show is Harlem yes we're making good and yeah. It's going to be returning for a second season on February 3rd. So you already know I'm going to be talking about that show. And it's on Amazon Prime if you didn't know. And if you don't have Amazon Prime, you better get to it. That show is back. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot wait to see what's happening on that show. So, yeah, that's one of my favorite shows. Currently, right now, I'm watching... um, I'm re-watching Suits again. I'm on season three. That's my favorite show. I don't care. I'm a Meghan Markle fan. It is what it is. So I'm watching that show again. And I'm also watching this other show that's on Paramount Plus. It's called Evil. It's not what you think it is. <laughs> it's not what you think it is. But yes, it does have to do with a lot of supernatural. And if and I am into a lot of those supernatural stuff, then, then it is what it is. But, um, I'm just so happy for this year, man. Y'all have no idea. I'm just, I am just happy for this new year. I just, I'm just ready for whatever, whatever God is about to bring into my life. That I am okay and happy at the end of the day. Because, baby, last year taught me a lot. Last year has taught me to just keep on pushing, you know, and forget the bullshit. Like I said, I'm not dealing with olive branches. I'm not dealing with anyone that's going to come back into my life after either blocking me, you know, deleting their accounts. And then, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. When you do something with intention, 
make sure that you're not hurting anyone in the process because when you do certain things like petty shit and then you expect somebody to just come and coddle you and ask you oh what's wrong are you okay oh i'm so sorry to hear that like you have to start doing things with intentions like if you're gonna do certain things because you know you need the space you need the time you need whatever it is you need to communicate that these backyardigans that feel like they just do things and don't care and value about what other people are going through and they just become selfish inconsiderate assholes you just have to take a step back and realize that mm -mm, i don't want you in my inner circle i don't want you in my energy i don't want you in my space so again i'm not doing olive branches i'm letting you go i'm watching that leaf fall off that tree and no, I'm not picking it up. Mm -mm, no, I'm not doing that. Because at this point in my life, I've come to terms with understanding myself as a human being, as a black woman, and knowing that there's certain things that I'm not going to tolerate. And it's true what a, a friend of mine had told me when I was 29 she said to me when you're reaching your 30s you're gonna start to feel this effect of not giving a fuck you're gonna start to care less about certain things you're gonna start to see things for what they are and you're just gonna be like all right cool whatever it, things are just gonna come to you where you're just gonna start sensing bullshit a mile maybe two seconds away and you're just gonna be like eh, yeah, not today. Not today, homie. And she was right about that. The shit is true. And yeah, I'm sticking to that feeling. And I'm still feeling that feeling. At the end of the day, I know what I want. And if people are not coming to you with intentions of knowing what they want and they just want to come into your energy because they see what you got and see what you're capable of doing, tell them to reverse <laughs> instant block and delete that because you don't need that energy around you you don't need those kind of people around you that's going to steal your light who's going to dim your light who's just going to be there just to take what they can take from you and crush you in the end we don't need that in our lives nowadays with everything that's going on in the world we just need to focus on our inner peace whatever that is focus on that dwell on that every day even when you're clocking in to go to work always keep your intentions pure always keep your intentions right if you're having a bad day take a step back don't throw your bad day or bad energy onto anyone else always remember that what you do to what happens to you and what you project out into the world and what you do to others can affect them in so many ways so always remember that when you're doing certain things do this do think with intentions, but make sure that your intentions are pure. Don't go out here and try to be angry Sally and angry Pappy all day and then expect goodness to follow you. It doesn't work like that. So always remember to stay pure with your intentions and just let go of the rest. And if anyone decides to return, <laughs> I got something for you motherfuckers that decides to return. I have something for you guys that are thinking about returning back you know what <clears throat> i think i'm going to leave that one right there on the next episode because i feel in my heart that there's going to be a return and i'm i'm good for returning back to sender but i feel it but we're definitely going to get back into that conversation in the next episode definitely but as always, you know I like to end my episode with a, with positivity and with a quote. So, the quote of today is, Be more concerned with your character than your reputation. Because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Too child. Yes, be more concerned with your character than your reputation. This is what I'm trying to tell you people. It's all about a new year, new boundaries, new, new relationships. It's about 
bettering you as a person. Don't focus on the things that you used to do and the things that you did or you're doing right now. Focus on how, who you are as a person. Always remember that. Everything is with intentions. And with that being said, as always, I'm sending out love and light.